Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. This is going to be a very simple one. And today we're going to be taking a look at this particle spiral. But an additional topic I'll be covering is the subject of favorites, which I hope you'll find interesting. So let's make a start. So let's come and check on the project setup. For this to work nicely, we need uh, 1920 1080. We need a frame rate of 60 seconds and a duration of 20 seconds. So what I'm going to show you in addition to this spiral method is how to use the favorites. And I'm going to come over here. And as you see, I've got a whole bunch of favorites that I've created. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a link so you can actually put these in your own favorites folder. And I'll explain how to do all that at the end. So to get started, let's come over to the favorites and choose the 150 pixel square. Now, the only thing you need to know about favorites is that they will always be the length that they were when you originally created them. And in this case, my creation project was only 10 seconds long, and that's not long enough for this project. So what we can do is come to the last frame of the project and with the group selected, hit O on the keyboard, and that'll extend it for the full duration. So this is going to be very simple. We're going to use this square as a dummy object, and then we're going to attach a particle system to the, the dummy object. So first of all, we need to animate this square accordingly. First of all, we're going to attach a rate behavior to the Y rotation. And I'm going to set that amount to 360. So you can see it's now spinning around. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a ramp behavior to its Y position. So that's Y position, ramp behavior. Let's have a start value of say negative 540 and an end value of, I don't know, uh, 720. And that means it now spins upwards like that. But the final step is to create the spiral. And to do that, it's very simple. We come to the anchor point for the X value. And what we're going to do is we're going to add parameter behavior ramp to that X value. And so the end value is going to be in pixels, the width of the spiral at its greatest. So I'm going to go for 500. And you'll be able to see that gradually the, the circle it's inscribing is, is getting bigger and bigger. So then we can use this to drive a particle system. So again, we'll come over to the library and my favorites. And I've created this very simple basic particles um, emitter. Uh, it's, it's really useful instead of having to set it up from scratch, just grab that, bring it in. Again, you'll notice it's only 10 seconds long and we need to come to the end of the timeline and hit O to make sure it's the right length. So then what we're going to do is we're going to attach this emitter to the square. And we'll do that by using behaviors, motion tracking and match move. And then we'll select the square, not the group, as the source. And we only need to, in fact, to adjust the position. And you'll see that the emitter is now following the square. However, we actually want to offset it on Y to the original a position of the square. So let's go for negative 540 and then it'll start from the same position. And so now all we need to do is, in fact, we can turn off the square because we don't need it anymore. It's just a dummy. Now, we, now let's just do a little bit of work on the uh, emitter. Let's have a birth rate of say 500 to make it a bit more continuous. Let's turn down the speed to nothing and let's turn the speed randomness to nothing as well. And now you'll see that we've got this perfectly smooth spiral going upwards. It's starting to fade off and that's because the life is insufficient. So if we increase the life to 20, it will only start to fade off towards the end. So there you go, you've got a basic spiral. So now we've actually got the controls to, to adapt this to however we want it to. The rate is obviously the speed at which the rotation happens. So we can increase that by doubling it to 720. And you can see we've got a a faster, tighter spiral. But we'd also reverse the start and end values of the anchor point ramp. So let me just try that. So 500 for the start and zero for the end. And you'll see we've now got a, a diminishing spiral, a sort of kind of Christmas tree effect. And if we wanted those particles to be a little bit more sort of organic, uh, we could increase the speed randomness. So let's go for something like 10. 
And you'll see that that's, they kind of spread out as the as they get spawned. So this is now looking even more like a Christmas tree. So as I say, I'm going to upload a selection of my favourites, including the, the ones that I've used in this project. And in order to install them, you need to open up a Finder window. And if you come to the Go menu here, select Go to Folder, and then type in this path, and that's tilde forward slash library forward slash application support forward slash motion forward slash library and then hit go and it'll bring you to the motion library and you can see all the stuff that kind of lives in there and you'll see that there is a favorites folder and that's where you want to put these favorites that you've downloaded and as soon as you've done that they will appear inside motion and finally, coming back over to Motion, I want to point out a very, very useful thing called the Favorites menu. So obviously, you know, we can get to Favorites from the library here. And you can see there's a folder there called Favorites menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those shapes and holding down the Alt or Option key, I'm going to drag them into that Favorites menu folder. And you can see they're now in this menu here. But what that actually means is that we can come up to this Favorites menu at the top here, and you'll see that we've got those favorites in here. So I can pick out my circle there. And of course, all these shapes, for example, are going to be a specific size and style, and they will be perfectly centered up, which uh, saves a rather tiresome step. And of course, as you'll notice with my basic particles, your favorites can be as complex as they like, because they can be based on groups, and whatever's within that group will be saved to the library. So that's it potentially saves an awful lot of work. So I do recommend you get into the habit of using favourites because they're a really good way to work. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching and see you again another time.